In this screencast, we are going to discuss the physics behind ultrasound image generation. At the end of this screencast, you should be able to describe how an ultrasound image is created. You should be able to explain the impact that different transducers have on image quality and why you might use one transducer over another, and describe some of the basic user controlled features that can impact image quality. So let's talk about ultrasound waves and how they produce an ultrasound image. An ultrasound wave is a form of mechanical energy. As it passes through tissue, it causes compression of the tissue and what we call rarefaction of the tissue, which is sort of like expansion. These ultrasound waves that are used in medical imaging occur within a frequency range of about one to 20 megahertz and in your average soft tissue travel at a velocity of 1540 meters per second. However, that velocity will change based on the tissue types and that change does contribute to our image production. As the waves pass through the tissue, many different things can happen to those waves. But the most important thing is the reflection of the wave off of a tissue interface back to the probe, and those reflected waves are what produce your image. Waves that are not reflected but are scattered, refracted, or absorbed reduce the signal within your image and create noise and artifacts. The strength of a reflection off of a tissue interface is based on a few different basic factors. One, the acoustic impedance or the difference in the way the wave travels through two different adjacent tissue types, the surface of that tissue interface and whether it's very smooth or irregular, the size of that tissue interface, is it a large uniform interface or a small interface, and the orientation of that interface to our probe or to our, our insonation. So is it oriented perpendicular to the probe and thereby a strong reflector or is it oriented parallel to our ultrasound wave and therefore a poor reflector? Specular reflector is a term that is used to describe the optimal reflector. It's going to be something very bright in our image. It tends to be smooth with a perpendicular orientation to the sound waves and a high acoustic impedance difference between the two adjacent tissues. Acoustic impedance is a physical principle that is defined as the product of the speed of sound, or how quickly our ultrasound wave passes through the tissue, and the density of the tissue. And it's interfaces between two tissues of different acoustic impedance that generate the echoes. Bone allows sound to pass very rapidly through it. Soft tissue is a little bit slower, fluid a little slower, and gas is the slowest. And these interfaces, particularly the interfaces between different types of soft tissue, are going to contribute greatly to our image. So let's think about reflection. Here we have a smooth surface. This smooth surface is at least right under our probe oriented relatively perpendicular to the orientation of our sound waves. So when the sound wave comes down, it hits that smooth surface. And because it is perpendicular at that location, we get a nice strong reflection back to our probe to generate our image. When we think about scattering, this is best demonstrated on an irregular surface. And with an irregular surface, instead of reflecting back to the probe, your waves get redirected away from the probe. And since those sound waves do not return to the probe, they cannot contribute to our image generation, and they result in loss of signal. Refraction is a slightly more advanced concept, but essentially any form of wave, whether it's light passing through a prism or sound passing through a tissue interface, can undergo refraction if it passes through that interface at an angle. In this case, we have sound waves passing quickly through a tissue, and then they hit a tissue that the sound passes more slowly through. The waves that hit earlier in the process will begin to slow down more quickly than the waves that travel further through that fast tissue. And that difference between this part of the wave and this part of the wave will cause an angle or angulation of the wave. And again, refraction is going to often reduce the signal intensity of our image and can result in artifacts. Absorption is the conversion of that wave, which is mechanical energy that is compressing and rarefacting the tissue into thermal energy. So that mechanical energy as it passes through the tissue will convert to thermal energy and, and slightly raise the temperature of that tissue. And bone absorbs ultrasound waves better than soft tissue. Soft tissue absorbs ultrasound waves better than fluid. And that absorption of that mechanical energy, again, reduces the signal, 
within our image and can contribute to artifacts. So how is the ultrasound pulse generated? Traditionally, we use piezoelectric crystals. So within each probe, there are these specialized crystals. When you apply a certain electrical current to the crystal, the crystal will resonate at a specific frequency. That resonating crystal creates mechanical energy that is transmitted as an ultrasound wave into the tissue. When that mechanical energy or ultrasound wave reflects off of the tissue and comes back to the probe, the mechanical energy within the wave distorts the piezoelectric crystal and generates an electric impulse. So these crystals are very unique in that they can both resonate when stimulated with electricity and can generate electricity when distorted by mechanical energy. Image resolution on an ultrasound image is a little bit harder to conceptualize than the resolution of CT images. The characteristics of our pulse, both how many sound waves are being generated and what their wavelength and frequency are, are gonna determine our resolution. The axial and lateral resolution are what you typically think of as resolution of your image. So the up and down resolution and the side to side resolution. With your elevation resolution, referring to the thickness of your image. So let's talk a little bit more about axial resolution. The shorter the wavelength and the higher the frequency, the better your axial resolution is. So how fine are your pixels, right, in your superficial to deep orientation? And if we look at this diagram over here, we can see that each of these lines represents a tissue interface. And if we have a ultrasound wave with a large wavelength, we are gonna have a difficulty discriminating between say line one and line four, because the wavelength is greater than the distance between each of these lines. If we reduce the wavelength, now our wavelength is actually less than lines, the distance between line one and line three. So it will be able to discriminate between line one and line three, but it probably will not be able to discriminate between line one and line two. As we continue to decrease our wavelength and increase our frequency, now our wavelength is less than the distance between these two interfaces. So we will be able to more accurately discriminate between all of the tissue interfaces present. So increasing frequency and decreasing wavelength allows us to discriminate better between tissue interfaces and therefore improves our axial resolution. Lateral resolution is a little bit harder to understand, but essentially, each crystal can generate a wave and we can focus a discrete number of waves into a certain field of view. The density of the waves is going to determine the lateral resolution. So how discriminating are we as we look from right to left? In this case, we have a curved probe and instead of like in the diagram where we're focusing more waves into a smaller space. Here we're actually directing the waves into a cone or a curved field of view. And you can see that we lose resolution as the density of our ultrasound waves decreases as we move deeper into the tissue. So we have high lateral resolution here where the number of waves relative to the amount of tissue being imaged is higher. Here we're imaging much more tissue with a similar number of waves, so the density of the waves is less, and therefore our lateral resolution will be decreased. Elevation resolution is a third type of resolution in our image, and you can think of it as slice thickness, or similar to volume averaging. So the thicker the slice, the more tissue is being averaged together to generate our 2D image. The thinner the slice, the less tissue is being averaged together to generate a single pixel in our two-dimensional image. Now let's talk about basic probe types. The first probe we're gonna talk about is the phased array. In the phased array, you have multiple crystals along the surface of your transducer. Those crystals all will fire together or generate a pulse together. The crystals can send those pulses out at varying angles and create a sector image. Traditionally, Phased array probes are going to be lower frequency probes 
that allow for better penetration deeper into the soft tissues, but they tend to have lower resolution than a linear probe. One of their big advantages is a small footprint. So a lot of phased array or sector array probes have a small footprint that allows you to look through a narrow sonographic window. So in pediatrics, looking through the fontanelles or in chest imaging, looking through the rib spaces, that nice small footprint allows you to get a relatively wide field of view with high penetration with a sacrifice of resolution. A linear array probe is what we traditionally use for high resolution imaging of superficial structures. Unlike a phased array, the crystals do not all excite at the same time, but there is a sequential excitation of the crystals. This results in higher resolution. These pulses generated by the linear probe can be angled or steered to create rectangular or trapezoidal imaging. And in a lot of instances, small footprint linear arrays have replaced a traditional phased array because of their better resolution. Again, we're often using these for superficial imaging, like in the neck or the extremities. The curved probe, sometimes referred to as a curved linear probe, is truly a linear array oriented along a particular radius. There is still sequential excitation of the piezoelectric crystals, but unlike a linear array, which has a flat transducer surface, the curved probe has a particular radius. The geometry of our image will depend on the radius of the probe, and often short radius probes, maybe induluminal probes or transvaginal probes, where you're looking for a very wide field of view from a smaller probe. And then a traditional large radius curved array is what we think of for transabdominal and pelvic imaging, where we have a much larger probe, but it has a uh, less curve to it. So it still generates a wide field of view, um, but it has more rectilinear geometry than an induluminal probe or even a transvaginal probe. A relatively important advancement in ultrasound image production was this understanding of harmonics. When we generate a particular frequency with our piezoelectric crystal and it enters into the tissue, the tissue will resonate and that resonating creates new ultrasound waves at a frequency that is an integer to the original frequency, meaning we could divide the frequency of the original wave into the frequency of the newly generated waves. When we turn on harmonics, we essentially create a filter so that instead of listening back for the frequency of the originally generated wave, we only listen for those harmonics that are created through the resonance of the tissue. By listening only for the harmonic frequencies, we reduce a lot of the attenuation created by the subcutaneous fat. We improve our lateral resolution because we have much higher frequency ultrasound waves contributing to our image, and we have a higher density of those waves within our image. And we also reduce what are called side lobe artifacts, which may be discussed in a future screencast. You can see here an image where we have harmonics turned on versus harmonics turned off. We can see that with harmonics turned on, we get a much crisper, higher resolution image. The gallbladder appears anechoic as opposed to these scattered echoes. So we have better signal to noise and higher resolution with our harmonics on compared to off. Another important concept is compound imaging. With compound imaging, instead of sending out a pulse, listening for the reflections and generating an image from that single pulse, we will actually generate multiple pulses at different angles within the same field of view. We then take the image that is generated from each of those pulses and average them together to create the final image. This result results in a reduction of noise. <clears throat> it also accentuates high level reflectors while decreasing the contribution of low level reflectors. It takes more time for each image to be generated. So we have a lower sweep speed. And so you may see lag with real time imaging compared to if you had compound imaging off. And it can reduce shadowing because we have the ultrasound image being generated from multiple images at different angles. And so in some cases, that decreased shadowing can be a disadvantage because we're often using shadowing in a diagnostic way. So if you be wondering if something's shadowing, there can sometimes be an advantage to turning off compound imaging, which could in accentuate the shadowing of something, say, like a small non-obstructing renal calculus. 
In summary, ultrasound waves are mechanical energy that is generated by a piezoelectric crystal. That mechanical energy causes compression and rarefaction of the tissue. The waves, as they pass through the tissue, will be reflected, scattered, refracted, and absorbed, and the waves that get reflected back to the piezoelectric crystal will distort that crystal, generate an electric impulse, and contribute to the production of the image. All the other energy that gets scattered, refracted, or absorbed decreases your signal, increases your noise, and will contribute to the artifacts that we see. How a reflective something is, is predominantly based on the tissue interfaces where there is a difference in acoustic impedance. The higher the difference in impedance, the better the reflector. The smoother the surface, the better the reflector. The larger the surface, the better the reflector. And the more perpendicular to the probe, the better it will reflect your ultrasound waves. We're gonna use high frequency probes that have low penetration, but give us high resolution images when we're using or trying to image superficial structures. We will use low frequency probes when we need high penetration but we do that by sacrificing our resolution. Both harmonics and compound imaging are gonna improve image quality. They're standard on most imaging machines today, although sometimes turning them on or off can help accentuate helpful diagnostic artifacts like poster acoustic shadowing and enhancement. Thank you for your time, and I hope you will continue through the series on ultrasound physics.